Arrows Online Merchandising Group, and I'm going to be your host for today's special event. In fact, it's a premiere. This is our first ever webinar for bed and breakfast audiences. We're really excited to share with you today some valuable insight into the importance of your B&B website and the role it plays in sharing your story, identifying and attracting your ideal guests, and ultimately increasing bookings. But first off, I'd like to welcome everyone from B&Bs around the globe. I know the hours in your day are super busy and are precious, and so truly a heartfelt thank you for taking the time out of your daily routine to join us. A couple of housekeeping items before we begin. First, we're going to be recording today's webinar, and at the conclusion of our session, we'll send you a thank you for joining us email with a link to that recording, which you can share or listen to again at your leisure. Additionally, you have a questions dialog box in your GoToMeeting panel. I see some of you have already found it. Please feel free to send in your questions and comments throughout our event today, and we'll address them as we go, as well as if we have any time at the end of the presentation. There's also a dialog box in your GoToMeeting panel that's labeled Handouts. We have a couple of pieces in there that may help you relative to the topic that we're talking about today. We're also going to be tweeting during today's discussion, so please feel free to join the conversation at hashtag LeoWebinar. And first, as we do with many of our webinars, I'd like to launch a poll because we'd like to get the audience's take on this question. What day of the week is best for a web event relative to your time? Is it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? I purposely didn't include the weekend because we're assuming that that, in fact, is or are your busiest days. So if you could weigh in and let us know which of those choices. And what this is going to do is it's going to help us with scheduling future events because we want to make sure that we're scheduling them at a time that is most convenient for you. So at the moment, uh, it looks like Tuesday and Wednesday are the winners. Nobody wants Friday, so I guess no, um, no uh, surprise there. This next poll we want to ask you about is what time of day is best for you. So here's the poll. If you could weigh in on this as well. Do you like early morning? Do you like sort of mid-morning between 10 and noon? Afternoon between 1 and 4? Or early evening after 7 p.m.? So there are some early birds up there before uh, 8 a.m., but the majority of you are telling us that 10 to noon is good, and then early afternoon is uh, good as well, between 1 and 4. So, But it looks like, uh, by and large, 10 a.m. to noon is the best time for everybody. So thanks, everybody, for letting us uh, know what your thoughts are. We appreciate that. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our special guest, Mark Hayward. Mark Hayward is passionate about assisting hotel and tourism businesses with digital marketing strategy, content creation, and search engine optimization to improve bookings and sales. Having had the lifelong dream of owning a small property, Mark purchased a B&B in the Caribbean that had no customers, no cash flow, and no online presence. In order to quell the stress that came with this hefty new monthly mortgage payment for the business, Mark concentrated on acquiring an in-depth knowledge about digital marketing. His emphasis focused largely on creating a captivating website that would attract the appropriate guest demographic and a comprehensive social media footprint. Prior to selling his property, Mark's efforts managed to greatly increase inquiries and bookings, garner a number one TripAdvisor listing, and feature stories in Condé Nast Traveler, Islands Magazine, and the Boston Globe. Mark holds a master's degree in international development and geographic information systems, and he now works with clients to create online strategies that have tangible goals, benchmarks, and measurable real-world outcomes. Welcome, Mark. So great to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to participate. 
I'd like to introduce another special guest, Cecilia Williams. Cecilia Williams, along with her husband, is the owner of the Hillard House Inn, a charming property located in the heart of downtown Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania's historic district. The inn combines the 19th century style with modern amenities, giving travelers a cozy retreat in a home away from home. Cecilia manages everything from keeping guests happy, making sure the property is in tip-top shape, and their online marketing strategy, largely self-taught. And Cecilia will be sharing her insights and her experiences with us in a few minutes. Thanks so much, Cecilia, for taking time out of your busy day to join us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Darlene. I'm very happy to be here. Before our speakers begin, I'd like to tee up our conversation today which is how to improve your B&B website to increase bookings. Before we discuss the hows, let's look at the whys. There are still a fair number of people out there who aren't up to date on a present day B&B experience, assuming they're outdated houses in rural areas. Your website is an excellent platform to help educate travelers. Show them the ensuite bathroom, the uber modern decor or elegant Victorian touches. And because 85 of people who stay at B&Bs drive to their destination, be sure your website includes a map showing your relative proximity to the area and its landmarks and conveniences. Three quarters of today's leisure travelers use the internet for travel planning. This is the perfect opportunity to grab their attention over local hotel competition as three out of four people say bed and breakfast, which generally offer free breakfast, Wi-Fi, parking, and other amenities actually provide more value than hotels. So at this point, I am going to reintroduce Mark Hayward, and Mark is going to take it from here. Greetings, Darlene. Uh, thank you for having me today, and a sincere good day, and thank you to everyone out there for your time and participation today. I hope you're all having a fantastic week so far. I wanted to start off by just talking about my early experience of owning a small inn and some of the challenges I faced with my website and online marketing. My wife and I had the stereotypical lifelong dream of owning and running a small inn in the Caribbean. Uh, of course, we weren't rich, so that meant the only property we could really afford was a non-operational B&B that had no customers, no cash flow, no real internet presence or online existence. To this day, I can still remember nervously signing the mortgage document and then feeling a queasy about just having committed myself to an enormous amount of monthly debt on a business with no bookings and no marketing. Pretty much the only person in the world that knew we existed was my mom, who was about uh, 1,700 miles away from us. And to make things uh, even more difficult, neither my wife or myself came from a marketing or hospitality background. But clearly, if I was going to attract travelers and not go bankrupt, I needed to get the venture online as quickly as possible so that I could develop a trusted business re reputation within the travel community. Also, I needed to improve my B&B's non-existent search engine rankings. And of course, we needed to increase booking. Next slide, please. When it came to my property, and perhaps this is the same for you as well, because the realm of online marketing can be so broad and intimidating, it can sometimes leave you feeling overwhelmed and frustrated and perhaps paralyze you to the point where you don't take any action at all with your digital strategy. To keep that, happening, to keep that from happening to me, I decided to come up with five goals that could keep me focused and provide me with direction for my website and online marketing activities. The goals included, number one, a better web presence, meaning if people searched for my destination, I wanted to be prevalent in the search engines. Number two, I wanted to improve engagement with potential guests so that travel shoppers would feel like they sort of knew us before they even arrived at the property, which would begin to develop that sense of earned trust. Uh, number three, like most hoteliers, I wanted to increase direct bookings, which would hopefully take care of number four, ultimately lead to increased revenues. And lastly, I wanted to capitalize on the power of guest reviews because we knew our location wasn't that great, but we certainly could provide a remarkable 
uh, guest experience because we were such a small property. Those were the goals, uh, but we were starting from the absolute bottom. The minute online presence that the property did have included a couple of static web pages that were on other people's websites, so we had no control over the content. And on those static pages, there were lots of amazing photos of beaches and calm, serene nature scenes all of which exist in, in abundance at my property. However, as I said before, my inn was a small property located in a neighborhood and not on the beach. To paint a little bit better of a picture for you, we had a rundown home on one side of us, and on the other side, we had a neighbor who kept many, many free-range roosters that would sometimes crow at all hours of the day and night. So I really had my work cut out for me if I was going to achieve the goals that I had set out. Next slide, please. So uh, my marketing strategy, after a couple of not so great reviews because of our location and our lack of marketing, I realized my property needed an improved digital strategy and a new website where I controlled the content. As you all know, when it comes to small properties and B&Bs, negative reviews can have a devastating impact. The first step that I undertook, I set out to learn everything I could about online marketing and figuring things out like, how do you write well-structured copy? How do you share stories and photos that resonate with people so they feel connected to you? And how do you build earned trust online so travel shoppers feel comfortable giving you their credit card and making a booking? As I begin to get... Excuse yep. me, Mark. Yeah, yep. um, we're getting some feedback from the audience that your voice is cutting in and out. Okay, uh, let me try changing positions. Okay. There you go. Thank okay. you. Thank you. As I began to get answers to these questions, the first place that I focused my energy was on my B&B's website and making that the home base or hub from which all of my internet marketing would be based from. With the website, I decided that being wholly transparent through many photos and a visual first strategy about what our inn had to offer would let travel shoppers know exactly what our location provided in the way of true cultural experience. And we focused on having a well-defined market niche and branding ourselves as the inn for the adventurous traveler because we were hoping to appeal to the demographic that we deemed as our ideal guest. The website was a critical base for our targeted marketing because we knew that we couldn't market to everybody and we wanted to set guest expectations early in the travel research phase. People who were looking for a crazy nightlife or a lush resort would not have been happy at our end, so we decided to sort of filter them out so that the folks that did book with us would be happy when they arrived at our property, which would ultimately lead to improved reviews and then, of course, increased revenue over the long term. Around the same time for my marketing strategy, I also started consistently blogging about my property, our guests, and the destination in general. I'm sure you all know this, but creating written and visual content is a fantastic way to help educate potential guests by sharing stories and helpful information. At least three times a week, I would publish a post that I created, or even better, I would get photos from guests and have them provide details to me and insights about their visit and, and write up what they recommended. We strongly encourage guests to review us so that we would remain high in TripAdvisor's ranking. But even further, I would spend a part of every day responding to reviews and then also answering questions in TripAdvisor's destination forum that was specific to my location. Being helpful in answering questions for people in the online travel forum helps you to build relationships and trust with potential guests, and it allows them to see you as the expert as your destination, again, working on that earned trust. And uh, of course, for other social media outlets, I focused a lot of my energy grooming our presence on Facebook and creating short informational videos for YouTube. Next slide, please. What I didn't know about web marketing could easily fill a whole webinar. Sadly, back when I owned my b and affordable and comprehensive out-of-the-box website and marketing solutions like Bizly did not exist. So in my naivete, 
even though I had never built a website before, and all that comes with that, since we lacked funds for website development and marketing, I was forced to learn how. There was so much that I didn't know, and the list that you see there is just the beginning. Uh, for example, I, I should have known, but it came as a shock that hiring someone to do website design can run $3,000 or more, and then getting help with search engine optimization and copywriting can easily be another $5,000 on top of that. Plus, when I was doing it all on my own, I had no one to turn to for tech support, perhaps like you if you're doing it on your own, or worse, if I had had a security breach. And then, of course, I'm sure maybe some of you have struggled with this. There was building the website so that it was optimized across all devices, as well as then figuring out how to integrate the booking engine. Needless to say, what I didn't know about web marketing was expansive, and it was ex exasperating to learn. If I had to do it over, I'd most certainly seek a platform that could handle just about everything on that list, so I could focus solely on providing remarkable service and enjoying the company of my guests. Next slide, please. Uh, for yourselves, if you're having specific issues with your website, uh, perhaps you're not getting the correct travelers or you're losing bookings to the OTAs or a competitor BNB, this list here provides some user experience details and website best practices that you may wish to consider for your BNB. User experience can be defined as everything that happens to your site users when they interact with your business online via your website. This includes what they see, hear, and do, as well as, uh, very importantly, the emotional reactions that are invoked as they browse your property. Good user experience starts with a website that is built with empathy for your guests. It's sort of not based on your personal preference. Thinking about user experience, more specifically, you want to really determine uh, is your BNB's website and mobile experience the same and consistent? Does your site draw in your ideal guests and encourage travel shoppers to stay on your site longer by grabbing their attention with a lot of photos so they can actually visualize the experience of being at your BNB? Uh, and perhaps most importantly, can users figure out your navigation quickly enough to find the information that they are seeking and to move them further along in the booking process. And when they are ready to book, is the booking or purchasing process frictionless? It's important to note that with your B&B website, you have about the time that it takes for a person to blink to catch the attention of a first-time visitor to your site. And it takes website users only 2.3 seconds to scan to see if they can find what they're looking for. We've all had experiences where we visited a website that was slow to load or cumbersome or simply made it difficult for us to achieve our objectives. If your potential guests can't find information easily or have trouble making a booking, they'll quickly leave your website and travel shop elsewhere. And I also wanted to put this in here for website best practices, especially important for search engine optimization Google is now also penalizing your site in the rankings if it's slow to load or it's not mobile optimized. And no matter where a travel, travel shopper is in the buying cycle, whether it's the fact-finding phase of a particular destination, the research phase for lodging, or even the booking phase, potential guests are more likely to book with you when your website provides a pain-free and seamless experience. And just to Finally, to bring it back around, and in closing, how did my website and marketing strategy do after I not so easily figured all of this website stuff out? Direct bookings increased exponentially. We were able to rank on the front page of Google for most of our desired keywords and phrases. And because my website was prevalent and easy to find, not only by potential guests, but also by travel writers, as Darlene mentioned, we were featured in Condé Nast, Islands Magazine, and the Boston Globe. And because we were extremely transparent about what our property had to offer, and we worked to attract a special traveler demographic, 
we maintain a, a top position on TripAdvisor for the years that we owned our B and B. So we had pretty good success. Thanks very much, Mark. Uh, really great insights into your experience. Just to recap what Mark shared with us, you don't have to struggle and do it all on your own. There are now affordable, comprehensive, all-in-one website and marketing solutions out there. It's important to set goals for your website and marketing so that they can guide you and then give you something to measure success. It's also important to always be transparent and set the guest expectations early so that they're not disappointed when they arrive and that ensures that they uh, uh, have a favorable view of you and, in, and increases your chances that they'll leave a raving review. Having a visual first website so that travel shoppers are immediately drawn in and not leave ensures that you can encourage those direct bookings. And then make sure that your booking option is prominent and easy to navigate because at the end of the day, people aren't shopping just for the sake of shopping. They're shopping because they are genuinely looking for a place to stay. So again, thanks very much, Mark. We appreciate your thoughts. And now I'd like to welcome back Cecilia Williams. And Cecilia, here is your first slide. And, and if you could share your story, that would be wonderful. Well, hello, Darlene. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Um, history of Hillard House Inn. My husband and I bought the house in 1999. It had been a family home for most of its existence. It was built in 1865, and it's a beautiful Second Empire brick building. Uh, we started operating as a B&B in 2006 and with two rooms, two guest rooms, and currently we have three guest rooms and a suite. Um, I'm self-taught, like most of us, in digital marketing and technology, and uh, I do attend almost every webinar that is offered on the hospitality um, industry. I find that even if I just take a little bit away and a lot of times I take a lot of information away that I can use and process and uh, hopefully build the business. Um, the first website was designed by a family member and it was adequate for the time but very basic, uh, just a few pictures, initially no booking button but um, I, I acquired a booking engine and a booking button which very important still is always having a booking button on each, each page. Second website, I had a, um, through my hosting, my current, my then current hosting site offered free website templates. So I developed my website that way. I added slideshows, thumbnails, rooms, reviews, Google Maps. Uh, the program was difficult to work with. It took me quite a while to figure out how to do things. And uh, customer support was non-existent. Um, it got better over time. Um, so I ended up with, uh, I noticed that websites that I looked at were getting cleaner, uh, bigger pictures, less text. So I, know, I knew that I needed an updated, clean, visually oriented desktop and mobile website. I already had a mobile website, and so I was prepared for Google Analytics, Analytics um, surprised or development uh, earlier this year. And I needed a method to easily update my information. I'm sure like um, I'm like the rest of you, I sign up for every free directory, uh, online travel agency, everything. So um, I needed a way to keep my information current on all these different uh, facets. And I needed a system that was more user-friendly to me and uh, had, a, had a professional looking product and also that had personal support. I really was beginning to um, really need this at this time because things are getting more and more complicated. Next slide. Um, our biggest challenges in the last two years, over 1,000 1, hotel rooms have been added to our um, area along the 81 um, North and South Corridor in Northeastern Pennsylvania. 
and uh, I needed to um, I needed to attract I needed to show why my bed and breakfast was the place to stay rather than the hotel rooms um, that had that were presenting themselves. Um, Pictures have always been a vital feature in promoting and selling bed and breakfast as a way to stay. But where individuals and a traveler is anxious to see what your house looks like, they'd be able, they'd like to be able to picture themselves in the place. And also, I needed to uh, improve social media marketing. I have to admit that I have not embraced Facebook as others have, but Visibly has helped me over that hurdle. And Hillary House Inn now has a presence on Facebook. Um, and this is. These are the ways that we're solving these challenges. First of all, my beautiful new website, um, my online presence on Facebook, uh, using Visibly's digital marketing system, which um, as I make a change on my website, it is um, it transfers itself to the different OTAs and uh, the success coach, which Amanda is my success coach and um, is one of the biggest biggest bonuses to this program. Next page, please. Uh, people say with these pictures, I remember this from your website. People don't say, I remember this quote from your website. Um, having pictures, inviting pictures, makes the unfamiliar familiar to the guests. It gives them a connection. And that's the function of the virtual tours and videos. Um, a connection with the travel shopper, so that um, they see something, see something they like, and it's not even a conscious thing. Um, it is a like an emotional connection. Um, next slide, please. And uh, Cecilia, there was a question from Rhonda in the audience. Uh, she didn't. Un she's new to the whole B and B experience and she's not sure what an OTA stands for. So that's an online travel agency. So the likes of Expedia or Priceline, uh, Orbitz, those are all examples of online travel agencies. And your property, Pillard House, uh, is listed on those. Is that right? Yeah, I am listed on some of them, yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. So Rhonda, thanks for asking that question. And as Cecilia talked about, she has implemented her social strategy. She's uh, just uh, starting out with her Facebook suite of apps and really looking forward to revving up that action on Hillard's House Facebook page. And because she wants to begin conversations with existing clients. And Facebook, as some of us know, can be used to drive new business as well. And so we know that your time is uh, super valuable. So as Cecilia pointed out a minute ago, once you update the website in one place with Visly, it keeps everything in one place. When you upload new photos or videos or you want to change out um, things, you can do it in one system and then everything gets updated uh, at one time. And then uh, Cecilia has also implemented her mobile solution as well. And uh, this is a quote that I love, Cecilia. Steve Jobs famously made a, made a uh, post-personal computer prophecy. And this year it is coming true. And what he said is that mobile sales will surpass desktop sales for the first time in history. And uh, he was right on. Since the explosion of the on-the-go world, you know, the question is, have you guys out there adapted your online storytelling strategy to really include a mobile experience for travel shoppers, regardless of the device that they're using? Because ensuring that your property has a good mobile presence really should be a priority. Google research tells us now that 83% of leisure travelers that have had a poor experience on a mobile site. And only 23% of those who encountered a mobile site that wasn't actually optimized pushed through to make a booking. That means you're totally missing out on booking opportunities on mobile devices if you haven't stepped up to 
this challenge yet. And we have a picture on the screen of Cecilia's tablet version along with the phone version, the smartphone version. So Cecilia, I'll pass this back to you. Okay, um, results to date since I've signed up with Bisley and uh, gotten a new website up and running. I have, uh, there has been an increase on online bookings for business travelers during the week, which is something that we, one of our goals. Um, let the business travelers fill up the rooms on the weekdays and our leisure travelers on the weekends. And uh, traveler shoppers are in, more engaged with our content. Um, they view on an average more than 100 photos per visit. And just from the guest room page alone, it's resulting in a conversion of 30%, meaning clicks to the booking engine. So that's where you would like to send them. Um, Excellent. Uh, and Cecilia Ricardo from the audience was asking uh, about how your direct bookings have increased. So I think uh, what you just commented on answers Ricardo's question. So thanks for sharing that with us. OK, um, next slide. Um, and finally, website tips for b, &B owners. Uh, your website is your introduction to the, to the traveler. Um, make it as pleasant and as easy to use and as nice to be there as it will be for your guests to be at your um, b, &B. Uh, Make sure you use quality photos. And that's, it has never been easier. Um, to do that, to take your own photos even and, and post them. And look for a simple and clean web design. People want things quickly. Um, remember always, booking button on every page. And um, online marketing is getting more and more complex for the vendor. Um, and I really suggest that so that you can get make better use of your time uh, take advantage of professional expertise and uh, professional uh, programming. Um, use your time, which is your most valuable asset, um, on taking care of your guests and making them comfortable. Um, and I, that's my closing note. Um, Thanks, Cecilia. Um, lots of great questions from the audience, and I know on all of these events that our audience really appreciates hearing from someone who has the same challenges and like you who's figured out how to actually uh, step up to those challenges and make it work for your BMB, the Hillard Hub. So thanks for sharing that with us. Thank you. And just to recap what Cecilia talked about, you simply can't afford to keep your website in the past or on the back burner. This is the wonderfully connected world that we live in today. An uncluttered, focused, and beautifully informative website will be your best asset with consumers looking for a special experience. And like Cecilia does, be the resident expert about your community. Your helpfulness will pay off. And you can do that by talking with folks on your Facebook pages and on your websites as well. And lastly, what your guests say about you is more important than what you say about yourself. It carries an awful lot of weight in today's environment. And Cecilia talked about increasing her business traffic, which I thought was very insightful. If you'd like to t attract more business traffic to fill in the week, tell those ro road warriors why they should choose you over the big box hotels. And as we heard Mark say as well, you don't have to go it alone. There's a lot of educational resources out there, like today's webinar. We have online video tutorials and personal attention, as Cecilia described, for you if you're a Visly customer. So one last poll for everyone. I'd like to launch. And what we'd like to know from you now is what topics would you make time for in the future? And you have several uh, answers to choose from. How to convert more shoppers into guests. How do I know if my website's working? How to upgrade my website to drive more direct bookings? And how to keep my website consistent across desktop and mobile? So if you could let us know what topic 
you'd like to hear more about, we'd really appreciate it. And we'll make sure that our next web event, which will be in October, is going to cover that. So by and large, we're hearing how to convert more shoppers into guests. So thanks, everybody, for weighing in. I'm going to close the poll and uh, just take a couple more minutes of your time. If you share some of the digital marketing challenges that we discussed today, and if you want your BMB to stand out across today's travel shoppers, then you can benefit from Bizly, which is our digital marketing system. It helps you engage travel shoppers by creating relevant, powerful visual stories about your property. There's no extra work to build or maintain multiple versions of your website for desktop or mobile, and it's in real time. You don't have to wait for a webmaster, or you don't have to pay for a webmaster. You can do it all yourself. You truly can. Mobile sites are Google verified and mobile friendly with booking opportunities, as Cecilia said, on each and every page. And you can make your digital marketing work smarter and more efficiently for you so that the shopper chooses you with the certainty that it is the right choice for them. So as I mentioned, we have another BNB webinar in October. It's actually on October the 15th. And as I said at the beginning, we are going to send you a thank you for joining us email with a link to the recording of the webinar. So thank you very much, Mark Hayward. We really appreciate you uh, setting the stage for us up front. Cecilia Williams from Hillard House, thank you very much. Your insights as to how you're operating your digital marketing at Hillard House were really, really helpful. And to our audience, we really appreciate you taking this 30 minutes to join us, and we hope that you join us next time. So thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Are you...